Though the elected leaders of a free nation enjoy the confidence of their people, it is the people themselves, unknown and unsung, who weave and wear the fabric of democracy. What follows here is the record of such a people, the people of our nation who played a worthy, active part in a great experiment, the experiment of free India's first general elections. The aims and ideals that became reality on our attaining independence were well expressed through the adult franchise clause incorporated in our constitution. Universal adult franchise, a phrase that became a fact, a phrase which conferred on nearly half our total population the right to vote, the right to frame the form of government most suited to our needs. For a nation that had emerged so recently from foreign rule, it was a big step, a bold step forward. For a nation whose illiterates formed the vast majority, it was a course of action in keeping with the size of our subcontinent. The first phase in the great experiment was to enumerate the lists of eligible voters to fashion the electoral rolls for the entire country. This was a task of the greatest magnitude for over 175 million names had to be compiled and entered. The next course was the delimitation of a colossal number of constituencies spread far and wide. The total comprised 2,438 single member and 666 multiple member constituencies. With the spade work begun on our franchise, laws and regulations concerning every aspect of electoral procedure had to be drafted, had to be passed by Parliament. These included modification of electoral rolls, qualifications of candidates, campaign expenses, election offences. It was now time to gain the confidence of the electorate itself concerning the great experiment. Every medium of publicity was utilised, utilised to orientate the voter. Democracy was on trial and our many millions were the jury. Since there is no better way of learning than by doing, a series of mock elections were arranged. These mock elections held at various centres acquainted our people with the mechanics of voting. Symbols sidestepped many a difficulty, making it easy for an illiterate to spot his favourite candidate. The rehearsals became a boon for officials on election technique, guarding against any slip-ups. This official training made for safe and fair conduct of the elections. Polling programs were made flexible, adapted to meet the demands of agriculture or climatic changes. Lastly, the ballot box, sacred symbol of democracy. Ten million rupees were spent in constructing two million two hundred and ninety-nine thousand 478 ballot boxes. If placed end to end, they would reach for 327 miles. With the party symbols allotted, the stage was set for the great experiment. Into the arena they stepped, candidates of every shade of political opinion. Over 20,000 in number, some were independent, others the nominees of different parties. Each was determined to contest the elections with all his ability. Political fever ran high. Campaigners used every media to sway the voter and win his vote. Electioneering took precedence over all other events. Candidates, through personal contacts with the public, explained what they and their party stood for and had to offer. Well-known leaders made extensive tours, gaining personal knowledge of the political pulse of our people. Mr. Nehru, as president of the Congress party, made a lightning tour of the land. In a period of seven weeks, he addressed innumerable meetings to a total audience that could be safely reckoned in millions. 
He campaigned as Congress president, but as Prime Minister, he exhorted our countrymen to exercise their franchise. He said, it does not matter for whom you vote, but vote. Equally vehement were the other party leaders and candidates. Jai Prakash Narayan, outstanding figure of the Socialist Party. Leaders of the Krishak Mazdor Praja Party, Sucheta and Acharya Kriplani and T. Prakasam. Dr. Shama Prashad Mukherjee, the Jan Sang, and communist leaders, Miraskar and Gopal Rao. Political views of every size and shade were seen, developing the giant design of democracy. And then on the 25th October 1951, the great experiment unfolded. Among the first of our 175 million men and women to go to the polls were the hardy hill folk of the northern district of Himachal Pradesh. Next came Travancore Cochin, followed by Hyderabad, Pepsu, Madhya Pradesh, the Punjab, Bombay, Madras and so on. Such scenes were an oft-repeated theme throughout the nation. Each citizen over 21 had the right to cast his vote. Each citizen, man or woman, young or old, in sickness or in strength, countryman or city dweller, weaving thread by thread the fabric of democracy. Some came on foot, some by conveyance, some too feeble or infirm were helped to achieve their fundamental right, the right to exercise their vote. Nearly 106 million votes were cast, which meant a poll of 60% for the House of the People alone. The largest democratic elections in world history were an unparalleled success. They went their way efficiently and peacefully, thanks to adequate precautions, to the efforts of the officials, but most of all, because of the wisdom and action of all of those who voted. These votes have chosen the 489 members of the House of the People and some 3,300 members of the 27 state assemblies. Democracy in action proving the faith that the founders of our constitution had in us. Such a success astonished the world. Observers from other lands were impressed by what they saw, the faith and orderliness with which our citizens cast their votes. Foreign delegations were generous in their praise of how the great experiment had been conducted and undertaken. Even our simplest citizens had displayed their inherent love of freedom's way of life. Covering more than three months, the elections were finally over. We had chosen our leaders in the best of democratic traditions. In conclusion, the chief credit for this noble undertaking goes to our people, whose multi-million voices have always the ready answer to what's good and bad in government. We are as yet too near the scheme of things to judge the lasting results of this great experiment that is best left to posterity. But if posterity were to judge whether the part our people played in the great experiment has been fitting and worthwhile, it can be acclaimed in a single word. And that word is yes. Jai Hind!